three, two, one. Okay, we are clear. Ready to go live in five, four. Cue the talent. Three. Hey, I said cue the talent. Two. And one. Attention hobbyists, sports fans, and collectors nationwide and abroad. It's time. part of live from the mojo break studios it's dan and doug come on so get hyped be hyped this is the hype What's going down, everybody? Time for another episode of The Hype. Episode number 43. We've almost been a year in this game doing The Hype. You can check us out on iTunes under Mojo Break as well if you're listening in your car at the gym. We got an action-packed episode. We also have an action-packed day of breaks. Majestic Football just came out today. New 2018 rookies. Uh, We hit a uh, nice Josh Rosen, similar to the one on the screen earlier this morning. Some nice dual autos. We also have some National Treasures basketball today, Bowman baseball on the schedule. So, uh, and we've been on fire. I've got, I'm joined by uh, Logo Con in the uh, Logo Man Con over there in the, <laughs> at the producer's table. He's just pulling nothing but Logo Man's pulling heat over the weekend. Yep. Dan, what's going on? Dan did not pull any Logo Man's. I did not. I'm not the, uh, I'm not Logo Dan. I'm not Logo Dan. I'm not Logo Dan. So, C Rad been pulling that heat. Donovan Mitchell RPA or a Donovan Mitchell logo man over the weekend. You know, it's funny. Somebody uh, on our Instagram was like, "Man, number to five in game worn. I don't want it." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I don't want ten thousand dollars either, dude. I don't want twenty grand either. Just give it to somebody else. You know what I'm saying? So, but we are going to start the show off talking about National Treasures NBA, which has been on fire. Probably half the print run has already been ripped over the weekend. And uh, stuff's fun. I mean, it's it's been producing hit after hit. The RPAs are going for about what we predicted. Actually, a little bit more than we predicted. And uh, it's been a fun run. What are your thoughts? I'll start with Dan. What are your thoughts on National Treasures NBA after getting a couple cases under your belt? It was good. Um, you know, I like, uh, and a lot of people are probably going to hate on this, but I like how they got some vets and some retired players that you haven't seen in products for a long time. Yeah. Um, that, I like that. I I. You know, and I also hear uh, complaints about there being a lot of sticker autos. That's been in T for a long time now. Um, there's always gonna there's always gonna be stickers. I know the the price jumped up to eleven hundred dollars. That's not when when Panini made that product. That's they didn't they didn't make it with the idea that it was gonna be eleven hundred dollars. They right. have a certain retail price that they they and it was probably what. Made with the intention to be about five hundred and fifty dollars, six hundred dollars, five to six hundred dollars retail. So, um, supply and demand, baby. Yeah, you're not you're not going to be able to get. And actually, <laughs> there was more on card autos this year than there have been in previous years. At least what I saw. It seemed like it. Yeah, I mean, I think they did a good job of uh, getting as many on cards as they can. But it is it is it's simply supply and demand. When that uh, limited edition Beanie Baby came out in the '90s, uh, people weren't paying ten dollars for it. They're paying hundreds because it was a collectible item. Uh, but unlike Beanie Babies, the card industry is here to stay. Uh, right, Beanie I, Babies is fading. But one uh, uh, one thing I can say about it that was a little tough. I mean, there's a it's a little heavy in redemptions. Yeah, um, that's I'm gonna be Downer Dan. That's what I'm gonna go with. Oh, downer Dan. Little heavy on the redemptions. Yeah, and to back them up, I'm not I'm not you know just drinking the Kool Aid today, even though it may sound like it in this next statement. Um, these guys have been playing. They just finished playing. So it's a hard to, you know, say, hey, I know you just, you know, went back-to-back nights on uh, basketball games and you're probably sore as shit, but come on, sign some autographs. No, nah, these guys are like, for what? Why? I got a Nike deal that I get paid more in a day than I get paid in 10 years from Panini. So I'm not going to sign these stickers for you or these cards. So whatever. So they got to throw them in as redemptions. They'll eventually sign them, but they couldn't get them in in time for the release. So it's either... 
push back NT until they get all the cards, which could be forever, which will piss people off too, or put in redemptions. So, I mean, they've got, they got Dirk in there. Kevin Durant's live in there, which is good. Kobe Bryant's live in there, and those guys are all on card. So in, sometimes in prior releases, Kobe's been in uh, redemption. Dirk's been in a redemption. Kevin Durant's been in a redemption in a lot of things. So those guys are in there. The, the RPA checklist is, what, around 35 guys, something like that? Um, I think it's 40. 35, 40. 40. And maybe seven or eight guys who are redemptions. Yeah, yeah. So I, mean, I think, uh, well, obviously Donovan Mitchell's a big redemption, Mitchell, which, is, which, is, which is, a, is a big hit. Um, uh, is Kuzma a redemption? No, he's live. No, he's live. Uh, Jackson, Josh Jackson. Josh Jackson, OG. OG's a redemption. He's a redemption. Um, uh, Mark Cannon? No, he's live. He's live. He's live. Who else? You ready to remember off the top of your head? Who's a redemption in there? Um, the Spurs rookie. Oh, Derek White? Mm-hmm. Derek White's a redemption. How about Caleb Swanigan? No, he's live. He's live. I'm he's just. Live. I'm, I well, actually maybe he, Caleb is a. Uh, oh, you know who is? They could have just said, "Nah," is Zizic and Zuiqui. Those guys are redemption. Yeah, Zuiqui. Uh, uh, Zizic is a redemption. Maybe not. Maybe I'm getting the two confused because they're bottom of, of the barrel guys at the moment. But not to say that they won't. Um, Ivan Rob's live, which I think he's been a redemption in a few things. Um, so yeah, they did pretty well. They didn't get um, the other Grizzlies rookie in there, which had a good end of the season. I know it was garbage time, but Dylan Brooks does not have an RPA in there for some reason. I don't know why. I don't even think he has any autos. So maybe it was one of those guys that just didn't turn anything in, and they're like, "Screw it, we won't put him in." Or they, or they couldn't get him to sign to a sign to a contract, or I don't know. Yeah, who knows? Um, I want to look at some of the early RPA prices. Um, got some screenshots from eBay here on completed. A lot of the auctions haven't ended yet, so we don't really have a true gauge. But it looks like uh, Jason Tatum is going to end around four, four to five, uh, four to four to five grand in that realm. That card doesn't look like it's in hand. I mean, it's in somebody. <laughs> it's, it's in somebody's hand. If you're watching on the podcast, it looks like <laughs> somebody took a screenshot from a breaker, which is is more and more common these days on these high end releases. I, I actually saw a Tatum um, sold by it now. Best, I think it was best offer. Or maybe it was just uh, ending auction for thirty eight hundred. Okay, so that's probably going to be thirty eight to four. And would that be the same if he wasn't still playing in the playoffs? Do you guys think that would be that would uh, yes, went down? Abs- I think it'll be the same. Okay, just because Absolutely. he has a chance of going to the finals, I think people are paying a little bit more money on him. Is that what the consensus is here? I wouldn't say so. No. I, if I had to guess what his what? RPS would have went for, even if say that say the Celtics didn't make the playoffs, if I had to guess, I would have said thirty five hundred to. What if they do make it to the finals? Yeah. It'd definitely bump up. Well, you're you're not going to agree with that one because you well, nobody, you get your King James tattoo. Nobody nobody's beaten James. Nobody's beaten the King. Uh, he's yeah. He's he's. Quite, I mean, he's I, I don't I don't even know if the Warriors could beat him now. Oh, man, it's gonna, I mean, it's going to be easy. Sweet. Uh, but here's some of the other prices. Uh, Kuzma seventeen hundred. This is these are all approximate and obviously early data. Uh, Kuzma is around uh, seventeen hundred. Lonzo Ball's twenty eight hundred to three K. And what I'm talking about are the the true RPA, the ninety nine, the vertical version. The horizontals are not going to go for. They're probably going to go for about a quarter to half, maybe on a good day, uh, compared to the, the the true RPAs or the ones that are on the screen here, the number to ninety nine ones. Uh, Fox and DSJ are around twelve hundred, as you can see. You know, I think seven. That, that's uh, a steal right now. Nine hundred to twelve hundred for Donovan um, or uh, for Dennis Smith and De'Aaron Fox. Um, Donovan Mitchell's crazy. His stuff's seventy five hundred to ten k. So he's double anybody else that you can pull, and he's a redemption. Dude, I think uh, I think Dennis Smith right now at twelve hundred bucks is a steal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, the only thing is, is the Mavericks. I mean, they're almost the worst team in the league how long until he gets somebody around him Dirk's probably not going to play very long who else do they have on the team they need to get another good pick for him to kind of come to fruition and get well some playoff they will get a good pick didn't they they got a lottery pick this year don't they yeah they do so then you have two guys you got two guys you do and you got an old Dirk and an, yeah an old ass Dirk <laughs> but doing the uh, farewell tour you know at some point who knows maybe he'll play forever but, yeah, it's kind of interesting because I've been buying some uh, Donovan Mitchell Silver 9.5s, and I don't have any pictures of that. But the Donovan Mitchell Silvers 9.510s are going for, like, around 400 400 is a good price. People are trying to get 500 for them. But about 400 all day, which is crazy because you got Simmons, who's going for 1500 So you got to think Donovan Mitchell is a good investment even at that price because he's probably going to get pretty close to Simmons, in my opinion. So... Um, yeah, I would definitely check that out. If you have something, if you want to invest in one guy, the $400 silvers, 
not a bad investment. I don't think they're going to go down. Um, and they have the potential to double next season once the Jazz are playing and this guy's killing it. I mean, the guy had a heck of a third quarter yesterday. 22 points. Um, and then the knee injury happened, but he was just cutting him up. Um, it looked like he was poised for the big game. Wanted to come back out there, even though his knee was messed up. Said, hey, I don't want to wait another two months to play basketball again. Let's go out there. They wouldn't let him play, obviously. But guy's got a good heart. He's got, he's got the <laughs> freaking moves. So, like Donovan a lot. I uh, noticed this on the forum about Logo Man's con- uh, talking about NT. Is This is like the second card that they've done this, and people are trying to speculate why, w- where these Logo Man's are coming from. Um, some, some people are saying warm-ups. Uh, if you listen to the podcast, it's a Logo Man with a head cut off, head cut off and it's a Jokic uh, Logo Man 101 Auto. So, every other Logo Man in the set fits in the window, but this one doesn't. And there's also a Chris Stops. Uh, somebody else, uh, the flawless duel, and the logo man's bigger. It's like that. So people are like, is it warm up? Why did Panini do this? Is this quality control? You know, kind of looks stupid, right? Maybe because Chris Stops and Jokic are bigger guys. They have bigger jerseys, <laughs> so the logo man's are bigger. They're stretched out a little bit more. They're, they're just a bigger the guy, the bigger the logo man. Everybody, everybody knows that. <laughs> bigger guy, bigger logo, man. <laughs> Stretch it out. Well, uh, somebody had a funny meme on Twitter about it where they had the uh, the Dumb and Dumber when they said, Petey, his head's cut off. <laughs> <laughs> the bird. So I want to get into the discussion with you guys, see where you guys land on this. It's obviously the topic of first take. It's obviously the topic on ESPN. Uh, for Rookie of the Year this year, we got Donovan Mitchell and Ben Simmons. This is the only two that are going to be in the question, obviously. Start with Dan. Who is your pick for Rookie of the Year between these two? Benjamin Simmons. No doubt. Put up a. I. I don't. I think the rule needs to be changed. I don't think he's a true rookie. Yeah. Um. I have been complaining about that forever. I think Blake Griffin also was out his true rookie season, and then he ended up winning rookie of the year. Um. He was able to look. He was able to basically not necessarily practice with the team last year, but he's able to like figure out study. the system, study yeah. the system. He. It's like being an intern. And then being able to get hired and then go to your job. Well, in football, and you're going to be better than the guy who didn't intern. You're right. Well, in football, Aaron Rodgers didn't have like his rookie season wasn't like in 2008 when he it was 2005 still, even though he didn't play. So it's only in basketball if you don't play. Yeah, well, yeah. well, baseball, too, I guess. Baseball's but. a little, little, little different. But basketball, I don't I don't know, man. I don't I don't think that's fair. I mean, Embiid played how many games last year and he almost won rookie of the year. Yeah, yeah. I think he played 50, 40, 50. And he wasn't, he wasn't a rookie but. last year. He was, that was like technically his second year, right? It was, yeah. It was, it was the same thing. So, he was so you're telling year. me, like, let's say, hypothetically, a guy gets drafted and he gets three separate injuries three years in a row, and then a fourth year he comes out and he's still considered a rookie. Yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. Do you do you do you lose your rookie status if it's longer than one year? Well, Embiid almost missed two full years. Yeah, and well, he was still considered a rookie. Well, Blake Griffin won Rookie of the Year in the he, following year because he was hurt the yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. And I was I I made that comparison with Simmons. It's basically the same thing. Blake Griffin missed a whole season, and then he won Rookie of the Year. Did any, did any rookie miss this entire season? I'm like that might be the guy to invest in. You know, like the guy that was hurt the whole season. So I, but I mean. The the rules are rules. Ben Simmons had a a better year. I think he uh, he's more important to his team. I don't know if the Sixers go as far in the playoffs without Ben Simmons. Yeah, you could probably say the same thing about Mitchell as well. But the Jazz were in the playoffs last year. The Sixers were not in the playoffs last year. Yeah, it was a big turnaround for the Sixers. Um, C. Rad, who's your pick? Oh, Ben Ben Simmons. <laughs> same reasons. I think Mitchell should win. I like Mitchell better. Um, if I'm starting a franchise today, call me crazy. I'm going with Mitchell. Oh, you're going wow. with the small. You're going with the small guy. No, the reason why is maybe he maybe his logo man's are smaller on cards because he's <laughs> he's a smaller guy. He's a smaller guy. I just I like the flash um, and I like the attitude. I think Ben Simmons has a cocky, um, doesn't talk to reporters, un, ungrateful attitude sometimes, and I don't see that with Mitchell. I see the courage. I see the character. I see the team already rallying, rallying behind him, making him the leader. And I know Simmons probably the leader of the Sixers as well, but I just I just uh, watching the last like this playoff run and, and the last couple games with, with Mitchell, I, I like the kid. I think there's all, we haven't seen all, everything from him. 
Um, and Ben Simmons doesn't have a jump shot. So and and one thing, uh, yeah, Mitchell isn't uh, isn't scared to shoot. He's a volume shooter. He Doug, is. You, Doug likes that. I do. I like volume. Dude, shooters. why why pass when you can shoot? Exactly. Just yeah. take all the shots. Yeah. I mean, it works for James Harden, right? Look where he's at. But I mean, the the thing is that I think the value will still be there for Ben Simmons because his team is more prepared to win championships than the Jazz are. I think the Jazz are a couple pieces away from being a caliber that's going to compete in the East. So. Um, so we'll see, but I like Donovan Mitchell personally. Um, that's just me. I just think Simmons with, uh, maybe, maybe I'm holding the grudge on the upper deck thing too. It's like, why would you sign with a company that doesn't have an NBA license? It's like, I don't know, you know, kind of dumb in my opinion. So, but uh, I wanted to get into some, uh, some inscriptions in NT as well. So, and there was some, some, some funny things, but, uh, we have a tiered NT break today before I get into the inscriptions tiered NT where you're guaranteed uh, a top 15 team, and that's coming up later tonight around, I think, 8 Pacific. So you're guaranteed uh, you get two teams, and you get one in the top tier, which could be the Lakers, could be the Jazz, could be the Celtics. So it's a good way to uh, uh, get a good team in NT. But uh, we recently pulled this massive Kobe that's on eBay, which is a – I didn't know these personalized cards are going for so much. It's crazy. So there's they're one-on-ones, but each guy has 10. And uh, they're supposed to inscribe something different on each one. So Kobe got the memo. We pulled the 0708 MVP, Kobe. And that's what it's at, uh, at with three days left. Uh, the two before it already sold for over 10K. So people are paying big money. They're like, Eminence what? No, we want NT personalized autos. We don't want no Eminence crap. So, but, but, there's, but there's 10 of them. I know. I don't know. I know. I, and I get there, there's 10. Each one is individually pers personalized. What's up? What's up, Irv? How you doing? You get one of these and you buy a box of Kareem. I know. You should, right? <laughs> you should. That, that would have taken. They could have had 40 of them or whatever. One for each case. Well, they made more prize than 40 that, cases of evidence. I think that person who put that listing up should have done a little bit more than $10 on shipping. Did not think it was going to go for that much. No, free, Not free shipping, dude? I'm not even going to bid now. What the hell? I'll I'm give gonna, you 10 grand. You nickel and dime me $10 on shipping? Go, I think I'm going to go hand deliver that <laughs> to kidding. somebody who, who wins it. So somebody hit that in our break and consigned it. And so Dirk got the memo, got the memo. That one, I think, went for 10K. So German wonder kind, very cool. And uh, but then we'll get into the guys that didn't get the memo. Giannis could have wrote Greek freak, could have put his number, could have put points per game, something. No. At least he um, signed it. So people are blaming Panini for this. I don't know if it was a sit-down session or what, or if he sent these cards in. Dude, look how different his auto is before we move on. I know. It's changed so much compared to 13, 14, that's like how, Prism. That's how it's personalized. Right? It's right? a different auto. And uh, who else we got? After that, Dennis Smith and Lonzo. I mean, Lonzo could have had so many personalized things that he could have wrote on there. I mean, we this could is, think of a is, bunch of them right now. This is one thing he should have consulted his dad on. I know, right? His dad did inscriptions for Leaf. Yeah. It would have been a it would have been a perfect. Why didn't he Why didn't he put like ZO two on there? He could have. He could have put ZO two or BBB. He could have put, put Ball in the Family. Yeah, dude. He could have put the Facebook URL for Ball in the Family <laughs> right on the card. So that's where we know that La Lavar ain't signing cards for Lonzo. Right there, we would know. That whole thing would be filled with advertising all over that card, dude. There'd be like Lithuania League dot com, you know, everything on that card if his dad signed it for him. So. Recently, I sat down with Tops, and it was perfect timing because I had looked with I've been, I've been watching these personalized autos and thinking how can I improve mine. So I my rookie card just came out. It's actually from 2013. So I did a few inscriptions that came right off the top of the dome. So I started with the proof is in the pudding, which is obviously my hashtag. So um, that's these, these are all one on one. So look for them on eBay uh, very soon. And, and if, if you're listening to it on the podcast, I try to do the best to describe this for you. And um, so if you go to the next one, I did Sausage Fingers, because some people do call me that. So that's one of my nickname cards. So uh, then you got the next one, uh, Seven and Seven Eighths, which is my hat size. So it's a, <laughs> it's a one on one hat size inscription. Uh, very unique, very unique. That one probably will sell the most, and it'll go to people that collect Bruce Bochy, uh, Sam Darnold. Um, Four-time fantasy football champ, which is another one of my accolades that I wanted to make sure that I put on the card so that people know that I'm a good fantasy football player. That was 20 years. I won four championships. I mean, that's pretty dang good. Uh, Co-ed softball MVP. I won that as well. So it was a whole, it was a church league. I was heads and tails. I was like the Ben Simmons of the league. So I had to write that on there. <laughs> Co-ed softball MVP. Um, Taco Bell, because I love that. <laughs> so I had to put Taco Bell on the card. 
I love Taco Bell. Um, <laughs> so that one might go for a lot too, you know, pay by the pound. So, and then the last one, I love you. <laughs> so whoever gets that card, you know, just know that me, I love you for having my card. So those will start at eBay. I expect those to get close to the Kobe prices. I mean, I expect somebody. I'll do free shipping too. Unlike Dan's listing, I'm gonna put mine up free, free shipping. So, yeah. I mean, what my cards look better. Let's just face it. My cards look better than the Panini ones. Personalized. So I could run. A, I could run. I could run a whole clinic on personalized. I mean, that was all in just five minutes. So, but check those out. You know, they will. Uh, they will. Uh, they'll hit eBay at some point. And uh, all proceeds go to Taco Bell. <laughs> My Taco Bell habit. <laughs> it looks like auto pin. <laughs> all right, so let's get into some uh, Mookie bets. This guy just, he didn't come from nowhere, but he came from nowhere in the hobby because his cards were selling for nothing compared to his stats. But recently, uh, this guy's just tearing the cover off the ball. And uh, his Bowman Chrome 2014 is the card you want. It's his first Bowman. And um, I want to just to kind of compare some of his stats. This is just this year, 360, 13 home runs, 27 RBIs. He's on a freaking tear right now. And um, so I, I compared. I went back prior to the season, like around April 1st, and I wanted to see what his 9.5 Bowman was selling for. This is just proof right here that you could take money and turn it around real quick in this hobby if you're smart and you have a good eye for talent. $207 it sold for April 1st. It sold for $563 three months or uh, less than a month later. So right there. So 563 is what a recent auction went for. 207 is what it went for in April. So yeah, before uh, before the season started. Yeah, before the season started. But he hit like he's no, had a, he, he's he, had 100 RBIs in the last two seasons. So yeah, it's he, it's amazing that his cards are going for that low. I think there was somebody talking about that last week on the show. Oh, the Mookie Betts. This guy. Uh, oh yeah, I know. I was talking about Mookie Betts last week. Uh, he's, I mean, they're talking Mookie Betts and Mike Trout right now. That's how I mean, this guy's went from like being compared to like uh, Pablo Sandoval to whoa to Mike <laughs> Mike Trout now. I don't think anybody's ever compared Mookie Betts to Pablo Sandoval. Mookie Betts can't pitch. That's true. I mean, he is a only a <laughs> five tool. Pablo is a six tool player. So, but yeah, we uh, Mookie Betts is killing it. I mean, I think at that price, that's still not bad. If you think about what Trout goes for, which is four or five thousand, right, on a nine five, there there should be some room for that to grow. He's in a big market, so you know, five hundred sixty three dollars might not be a bad investment. I might be trying to get some. Might be trying to get some. Get some. So, I mean, who would you rather have, a five hundred dollar Mookie Betts or a four thousand dollar Mike Trout? Oh, uh, one's a little bit more proven, obviously. I'd go with the bets, right? I mean, come on, I I can't I can't go against what I've been talking about for the last week. I mean, I think we're late on the show. Yeah, we are. We are. I mean, he, I think he had seven or eight home runs last week. Yeah. Guy's killing it. He's on fire, dude. He's killing it. It's insane. And he steals bases. He's a good outfielder. I mean, the Red Sox are gonna. It's gonna be between the Red Sox and the Yankees. But I, I know it's early. But I think there's uh, even at five hundred and fifty bucks. I think there's still room for that to I go. I think up. so. I think so. I mean, it sounds crazy because it went already jumped three hundred dollars. But man, you know how many two hundred dollar BGSs you could have bought? And did well with bought some Otani's with. You know, we may have some bets floating around here. I don't That's know. That's what I was thinking. Some of the refractors are going for a lot. I got to dig through my stuff see if I have a Mookie bets. Just I think the refractors non autoed are going for like a hundred bucks. Yeah, I'm pretty 200 sure two hundred bucks. Pretty sure we got some laying around. No, I'm pretty sure somebody else that came in and pillaged our oh, shop. Oh, yeah. Never they mind. Never mind. It. We don't got anything. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to try to chase the next Mookie Bets, we do have Bowman today, guys. So Bowman, eight box jumbo case. We're doing it the 20 spot style again. So Max Mojo, Max Combos. There's 10 combos in it. And I'm not talking about the combos that you eat that you can buy from 7-Eleven, you know, the little yummy pizzeria things. Combo teams. So Matt, instead of doing 26 like we've been doing, we're doing 20 on this one. So everybody has a better chance of getting the Angels or the Reds. So check that out. I think it's more than halfway full. It's coming up at 345 Pacific, uh, 645 Eastern. So check mojobreak.com out for that. And uh, I want to do a quick public service announcement and talk about card values here. Because the first Otani, and this isn't even the most expensive one, Atomic went for $22,000 with bids. Now people saw that and they ultimately thought that that's what the person got. So keep in mind, if you're, if you're selling cards on eBay or you're consigning cards on eBay, those aren't always paid. 
People shill these up. People that have that card can shill it up. We we sell cards on a daily basis, and we're probably about about sixty percent as far as getting money in. So twenty two thousand, and then you go down to what one recently sold for, which is about a week later, four thousand. So that's a big disparity. So just keep that in mind when you pull certain cards. It's not a guaranteed twenty two thousand dollars in your pocket just because one sold for that. So I'm just letting people know. Don't get your hopes. Don't get your hopes up because I saw a dealer that after that $22,000 card was posted, basically a customer hit it in his shop and he was like, my customer just got 30 grand. Congrats, man. 30 grand, 30 grand, 30 grand. So this customer's thinking he's got 30 grand. So he went from thinking, you go to the next screen. He's like, man, I get this VW uh, GTI, you know, 25 grand. I got this new GTI, you know, I'm, I've already got the money spent in my mind. And then he throws it up on eBay and it goes for 4000 and he's got a 2003 Volkswagen Jetta with 96,000 miles on it. That's a pretty big difference, man. You go from having a brand new car to a 15-year-old car with 96,000 miles a on little, it. It's a little pricey for that car. Did you, I, yeah, I, think, I know. I, I think you really searched for that listing, didn't you? It You're took, like, yeah, it took, yeah, it took me a little while. Because I'm all, man, I'm all 90. I, that, that's a, I'd say that car is about two grand, right? Dude, VWs hold their value. VWs hold their value. It's kind of ninety six thousand. Like, hey, we're dude. It's right down the street. I know. We should go check it out. Maybe that's Wait, a steal. Hey, see, Red. Where do you live? Hayward. Is that your car? V <laughs> <laughs> Dub. So I'm just saying, don't get your hopes up. And as dealers, like that's why we try not to talk about uh, values as breakers because you don't want to get somebody already have their money spent. You know, because I I'll do that with my wife sometimes. I'll be like, hey, you know, I got this Otani up on there. I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna go out to steak tonight. You know, we're gonna we're gonna go. I'm gonna go. We're gonna go on a fancy vacation, and then it's like I sold the car for five thousand dollars less than I anticipated. Damn it! Run up that credit card bill now. So just keep that in mind that the first sale is always gonna be inflated, and uh, if there's one that's way further than the other ones, doesn't mean yours is gonna sell for that. So just be realistic. That's all I'm saying. And I think uh, people that sell cards need to tell people, yeah, there was one that went for twenty two thousand, but we have no way of knowing if it got paid. And if that got got paid. The person is effing retarded. That paid twenty two thousand for. We don't throw around. We don't throw around that the R word. We, we do. Take it fine. back. Take it back. It's just words. Take it back. Speech. Take it back. Is that the recalled VW? I don't know. <laughs> um. Yeah. I, well, I'm like ninety nine point nine percent positive that that twenty two thousand dollar atomic didn't get paid. Why would that? Because that was the first. That was the first one. Remember, we were. That was before it actually got released. I think. I think that was listed on. It was like a Tuesday. It was a Tuesday before. It was a Tuesday before yeah. Wednesday release, and we were in Dallas, and we were like, we we're like, you got to be kidding me. Like, we knew right away yeah. that this was not legit. But we've been in that. We've and been then, seeing And then instantly for... you saw uh, Buy It Now's jump up uh, at like 15 grand. Yeah. 10 grand. And then, I, I mean, it's, it's weak. It's weak. I mean... We we deal with it on a pretty regular basis. That that Kobe Bryant, I'm I'm terrified. I'm I'm. I mean, you hope it gets paid. I hope it gets paid. Uh, we sold. We sold an Otani. We, we sold an At- Otani to- Atomic. So okay, here we go. We sold uh, an Atomic Otani. The uh, the same card we were looking at went for forty six. Oh, I think forty forty nine or something like that. Uh, we didn't get paid for it. Nope. No, no money. No money, zero, no, dollars, zero. No, dollars. no money, no message, no nothing. Just like I'm out. Well, I think with eBay's policies, for one, they don't they don't hold people accountable. People can just create new eBay accounts, or they can get enough dings on them they can still buy cards. But the guy that probably placed a bid on twenty two thousand, he's like, okay, it's the first one up, but I have like three or four days to pay, so I'll just see what the other ones end at. Mm-hmm. So if one ends at fifty, then whoa, I got a deal at twenty two. But if one doesn't end at four or five, then ugh, I'm not paying for it. Why would I pay fifteen thousand dollars more for something that's numbered to a hundred? There's going to be probably fifty of them on there in the next few days. I, I would say it's a little bit over fifty percent on high dollar cards that you that you do auctions on. Um, start at ninety nine cents and say they go over you know two grand, three grand. I would say fifty percent of the time we have received payment. It's it's crazy, and there's no recourse. It, it's you, I mean, all you do, you get your final value fees back, and that's it. Yeah, you get your yeah, that's it. That's I mean, it. so is it a better strategy? Just if you if you are 
unless it's a one on one, right? If it's a unique card, then you know maybe those bids are maybe more realistic. Is it better to just as as maybe a word of advice? Is it better to probably just start at extremely high buy it now field offers? So I mean, like, because if, if you pull that card, you could have put you know fifty thousand or best there's offer. No, there's no guarantee that you're going to get paid once somebody if you accept an offer. That's true. But I mean, at least, what it, at least you, say you put it up for for ten grand or best offer, and somebody offers you six grand. How many times do have you accepted a best offer and not not gotten payment right. for ever? Yeah. Like it happens all the time. It does. People have buyer's remorse, or they go, oh, if you're willing to take that, then I should have gone lower. So I'm going to go look for another one now. Right, right, exactly, exactly. Yeah, no, it's a good point. And uh, Irv, Irv brings up a point. Can you set up pay now? I don't know. I don't know how that works. Um, I think you could still get around that. Um, but, well, if you're doing best offers, you can't do pay now. You'd have to have somebody buy it now at the price you're asking probably to have a, have a pay now. But, yeah. But at least maybe you're not running a risk of somebody shilling your stuff at that point. If you're the first one up, you're a day before. So maybe that's a punishment for having it up a day before, man. I don't know. Maybe that's karma. You're not supposed to have the product on a day before release. Shouldn't be up on eBay. You're going to try to get a, an advantage, and then you well, don't you get had, paid. Well, uh, you had that red Otani that started at 99 cents, went up to like 50 grand. Guy didn't get he didn't get payment. Sent it to Probstein. Probstein relisted it, and it sold for 30. So, yeah, $20,000 less. But that's, at least, but I mean, at least, that, but a, at least you went tough, from like that's a tough swing, though. But at least you went from a Beamer to a Mustang. Yeah, not, but no, not. that's a, that's a tough swing. I mean, that's a that's that's like you basically got twenty grand ripped from you in a week. No, is that you? You like that? That sucks. Right, it, it sucks. It sucks. Kicking the nuts. But you also he. But hey, I mean, he probably bought a three hundred fifty dollar. Maybe bought a couple cases. I think he's still pretty happy getting twenty something grand for a red. It's an emotional a piece of cardboard. It's, a, it's an emotional roller coaster, though. It is. It is. It's fun. It's highs and lows. It's like, say you got a scratcher, right? You scratched it off, and it said you won fifty grand. Then you went back, and the clerk said, "Yep, yeah, thirty now." But he's like, "I know it said fifty, but you had to you you like you had a specific time that you needed to turn it in, and you waited like three seconds over." So now, now, I'm but you're g- still guaranteed payment, even with the thirty. You're not guaranteed payment. I guess. You're yeah, still but would money. you? So you would look at the clerk and go, "I understand." No, I, I under I understand. I would think I'd be like collusion. What are you pocketing my twenty k? I mean, Seven Eleven's not going to give you fifty thousand dollars over the counter. Shit, they won't even give you thirty dollars. Yeah, that's a funny story <laughs> too. Speaking of Seven Eleven, you just led me into a nice uh, little segue. This is unrelated to sports cards, but I thought it was a pretty hilarious story. Have you heard about this one? The Colorado woman in the uh, in the Seven Eleven with the cup that exploded. All right, so this. <laughs> This chick uh, went into 7-Eleven with a container of urine Duh. and uh, put it in the microwave, uh-huh. and it blew up all over the 7-Eleven, and she basically ran out, and 7-Eleven guy was confused, saying, well, what the hell blew up? Is this anthrax? Is this, you know, what is this? So they caught her at a drug testing facility down the street. So she basically took somebody else's urine and thought, I got to heat it up. So she went into a 7-Eleven. And used a extremely high powered microwave and probably put it in probably thinking out oh, thirty seconds. And you know, you can cook a whole freaking steak in that microwave in thirty seconds. I would have gone thirty seconds. <laughs> I think I probably would have I would have blown up on me too. But <laughs> I mean you a lot of those you don't even have it's like preset time. So you have one, right. two, yeah, yeah, three, yeah, yeah. four, five, six. So I mean she probably went three. Maybe but if, two, maybe one. Who knows? But the other mind blowing thing is that she's in Colorado. It's legal over there, right? Maybe, it, maybe it wasn't for weed. Oh, so that, well, you know, I just thought. I mean, a rational person thinking I got to pass a drug test. Would you be like I got to heat this this up? I got to go in. I got to go to Seven Eleven, holding somebody else's urine in a cup, and warm it up in a Seven Eleven microwave so it could be body I was, temperature. I was, I was concerned. How's she gonna How's she gonna transport it after warming it up? You're gonna go into the testing facility holding your <laughs> I, holding I, your cup and being like well where do i go well yeah exactly yeah here it is <laughs> I, I, I got it ready for you. i know I, I did it for you already i didn't want to be a burden so i did it at home i would think she would have to conceal it somewhere right i mean so she's got this cup on her like somewhere but it's not super it's, it's not super far-fetched i i get it i get it 
Yeah, but yeah, just uh, <laughs> urine exploding in a Seven Eleven microwave has to be a first. I don't think that's ever happened. How did the cleanup? The how did the cleanup work after? Is what I want to know. I would go home if I worked there. I'd be like the guy in uh, Super Bad, and you know the guy in the liquor store after all the yeah. bottles. I'd be like, f my life, and I just quit. I'd be like, nah, nah. <laughs> I draw the line at urine. I mean, but plus, isn't there kind of like a? Wouldn't you have to almost shut the whole place down? Like if you, if they have a stool in a pool, uh, totally rhyme there. They have to clean up the whole pool. I mean, isn't it unsanitary for the public to go in there now? I mean, I wouldn't warm up my bagel dog in that uh, in that <laughs> microwave. <laughs> I bet you they lost a lot of business too, dude. I am. Oh, you know, uh, gonna... there's not there's not usually a line in front of the Seven Eleven microwave. I think I would stick to those Relax. sandwiches, man. <laughs> stick to those sandwiches. <laughs> we got majestic breaking right after uh, the show here, guys. So uh, PYT number two. Um, so people are speculating. I know we talked about this last week. Back on the Otani tip. So people are kind of speculating that these could be either the kanji blues or the refractors. So it's kind of a crazy gamble because if it's the kanji, these are going for a lot more than they would normally go for. I know we got effed on one, but I think we spent like 300 bucks. This is go- these are- for yourself, dude. Josh Rutledge is dope. Oh, he's good. These are going for a thousand. I mean, years past are usually three or four hundred bucks, so it's crazy. So if it is a blue kanji, the ones they previewed that haven't been pulled yet, what if it's what if it's a redemption, or what if it's the a redemption for the uh, the refractor? Otani? Right, that's what the people are thinking because there hasn't been a refractor pulled. So what if it's that? What if it's the kanji? Well, then you make a lot of money on that, but it, that's a huge gamble. But I, let me ask you guys: Would anybody gamble on this? Would anybody gamble on that? Is that is that I mean, it could be a Kuna too, which maybe wouldn't be that bad. It probably wouldn't be a thousand dollar card because uh, he's already had a first Bowman. But it it could be it could be anybody though. It can be uh, it could be Gleber. Yeah, well, he got he got he just got called up. It could be uh, it could be Walker Bueller. Now Walker Bueller has it already. He has, he, an auto. he has a rookie. He has he's a, a rookie. he has a prospect and a rookie. Uh, does Gleber have a rookie auto, or does he just have a prospect auto? I think he might have a rookie auto. Does, um, does anybody in the chat know if Gleber's in Bowman Chrome? Or Bowman, not Bowman Chrome. But there's he, also... He's he's in it. He has he has cards. Yeah, he does have cards, but I, I can't remember if he has an auto, a Chrome auto, rookie auto. I know Frazier does, but I can't remember if uh, if Gleber does at all. What if it's the uh, Domingo, the, the, the guy who just got called up for the Yankees pitcher? Oh, German? Yeah. I think he's had autos too. I guess he could have a, a rookie auto. It could be. I mean, it could be anything. It the the chances. Well, it, yeah, and we're obviously just all speculating, but it's a good it's a good uh, conversation here to to talk about and speculate because they could, if they played it smart, they could pl- put the Chrome refractors and other releases like they did with Bryant, like we talked about last week. So, but uh, this was kind of shocking when I saw how much these went for. Because if you would ask me how much does a lucky redemption go for, I'd probably say four or five hundred bucks. But People are like, what if, you know, and a base Otani is selling for 1800 bucks. If it's a refractor, I may have a $3,000 card I think I was here. reading that there hasn't been any purple refractors of Otani as well. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. I've seen oranges. I sure. think I think these are all going to be released, like you were saying, like Bryant was in Throughout 2014. The... Was it 14? Yeah. I think they're all going to be released through the uh, the products throughout the year. Well, I was saying they could have ran the whole. Remember, I was talking about last week. They they I could have they could have ran the whole entire run back with him doing kanji. I mean, the guy freaking signs. For, he's he's gonna, he's coming out in upper deck now. But they did he's show. Got, he's, he's he's got uh, he's got uh, uh, Goodwin Champion autos coming out. But they showed pictures of the kanji autos attached to the attached to Bowman. They did. So where are they? I don't remember their exact. Um, wording on that social media post. I got to find that again. I think they just said Otani's coming or something. I don't think they said in. This is where it's going to be in. So, but it's crazy. If yeah, if you guys have seen it on eBay, let me know because I have not seen a kanji one. Um, but I'm surprised he can actually. You know, it's a, it's it's a good testament that Otani could actually go out there and throw fastballs because he signed seven million autographs already, and I think he's still signed. I think I think he literally goes out there and then he pitches and hits and then he goes back and he just signs autographs. I think he is officially signed with every company. Well, yeah, he's going to sign for Upper Deck, which would be his fourth. Yeah, fourth company. Yep. Um, 
I think Onyx is probably knocking on the door, and every other company is probably like, why not us? Well, I talked about it on the feed yesterday. I'm trying to sign up for Doug's Duels. Um, so I was going to have uh, Otani, Tim Salmon, um, uh, Otani, uh, Jim Edmonds, maybe uh, Otani, Wally Joyner. All, all Angels? Yeah. All the, you know, some of the crazy names that the Angels had over the years. Those are all really good players. That Those are named. all mediocre yeah. players. I don't think people want their autos. So that's my whole strategy is I want to get Otani with a really shitty guy underneath him. Whoa! And but then you just, uh, but you just named a bunch of really good players. Tim Salmon. Tim Salmon was a good he's, player. He was all right. He was all right. He was the first fish in, in in Los Angeles. Troy Gloss. Troy Gloss. But he was good too. You got there has to be there has to be some crappy players. Okay, we'll do Otani, Marvin Bernard. Marvin Bernard didn't play for the uh, the Angels. I, I know, but that's just what came <laughs> in my head. We could do uh, Kurt Manwaring. Kurt Manwaring was a good player. We do Kurt Manwaring and uh, oh, oh, I got it. John Rocker, Otani. Okay. Right there. Right. Doug's duels. We set the bar real low. So when you actually get a good card. John Rocker had a good career too. He's just a head case. And then there'll be a lot of there'll be special one on one quad autos with all of us on there in Otani. Just all all three of us in Otani. Just so. uh, well, I mean, what about just you and Otani? It's your it's your set. Yeah. Well, that's gonna be more, you know, plentiful. Those will be one per pack, but the quads will be one every two packs. Okay. So one, yeah. per, one per pack. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, there was also, I don't have a picture of it, but MJ Holdings, which does retail, um, they did a repack product and they somehow got Otani base cards from Leaf. So they're like guaranteeing one Otani rookie card for like 20 bucks. You go to Walmart or whatever. I was like, wow, this is what it's become. So just using, using a Leaf uh, rookie base card of Otani in like a, just a repack base card product for like 20 bucks. Crazy. And, and Leaf just probably uh, just sold it to him for a couple bucks a piece. He just printed it out. You know what I'm saying? There's no auto on it, so easy to do. So, yeah, Brandon Wood. There you go. O Otani or a Angel's hot dog vendor. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Doug's Duels is still in the works. This was, this was kind of funny, but it shows how hard Ichiro works. So, one morning in spring training 2017, he was uh, Ichiro was in the coach's room looking at his cell phone text messages. Ichiro told the coaches about one message he had he just received from a number he didn't recognize. The guy said he got Ichiro's number from A-Rod, and then he wanted to come meet him and study his stretching system. And the coach is like, what's his name? He's like, some guy named Tom Brady. Who the F is Tom Brady? It was recent. He's like, I, he doesn't know who Tom Brady is. So this guy, this guy is a machine. I mean, obviously, he probably speaks another language. He probably doesn't follow... You know other sports, but you don't know who Tom Brady is. This guy's he, focused on baseball. I think he's big time in Tom Brady. <laughs> no, I think he liter literally didn't know who Tom Brady was. So he's like, I don't know who this guy is. He wants to. Who the f is Tom Brady? That's true, dude. Tom Brady is trash. But then again, there is a video of him and Otani. I don't know if you guys have seen the video where Otani is running up to like to in and Ichiro's in a in a group of uh, of, uh, of Mariners. And Otani's running up to kind of like say hi. And then as soon as Otani gets there, Ichiro turns around like he's running on the field. So he's running completely the other way away from him. <laughs> it's, it's pretty funny. So there could be some truth in him like trolling Tom Brady here. So, um, but I thought that was funny. That one just came out today. You guys probably saw that on the, on the, uh, it's been passed around on all the news reports and things like that. So, um, but uh, there's Tom Brady. This Tom Brady wore this at the last events, which I thought was an interesting uh, style of dress. Um, I, maybe it's a new fashion. I'm not. In, I'm not hip to yet, but it's, uh, looks like he's gonna teach me karate or something, or I don't know. Or he's gonna he's gonna take me to my seat somewhere. But uh, speaking of football, 44 box NFL Boom Palooza is going down this Friday. We haven't done a Boom Palooza in like three or four months. We've been asked about it for a while. Everybody's itching for a big football break, so we're doing it this Friday with the release of Majestic. We got some Majestic in there. We've got some National Treasures in there. We got 2014 stuff in there. You can chase Jimmy G. We've got uh, multiple years of contenders, including 18 contenders draft, where you can get all the new guys. So, and there's a f early bird bonus for the first 15 that buy in. You got a chance at winning a free spot. So, 44 box going down this Friday. So, and uh, Tom Brady looks like he's about to ask a room full of people. To suspend their belief, their disbelief, and believe in the power of magic. <laughs> That's exactly what that outfit looks like. Look, he's gonna do something. Wow, that is an out, man. He's got to. He has to have a. He didn't come up with that on his own, right? Got to have a, a, a personal <laughs> assistant or something, right? It's like this is the new trend. <laughs> That's a good quote there. That's Mina Kimes. Mina Kimes, very smart. And uh, last thing, I want to talk about NFL predictions. I really didn't prepare for this one, but. 
I want to talk mainly about 2017 rookies. You know, we've got the 2018 coming up, but I wanted to talk about going back and breaking some 2017 stuff. I wanted to ask the chat, who do you think is going to have like a great sophomore season that's a good investment? So I want to get your guys' opinion on that. Um, obviously, we got guys that you know are already way up there on the spectrum, but is there some guys that are under the radar? I'm not going to name Zay Jones this time, so I've refrained from na- uh, naming Zay Jones and his nakedness. But um, I, I know it's off the top of the dome, Dan. Was there somebody that you see in 2017 products that might benefit from maybe a new rookie, a new t- teammate that could potentially worth investing in? <clears throat> I think the low hanging fruit. I'm not. I'm going to go do a couple, but the the low hanging fruit is Patrick Mahomes taking over for Alex Smith. He's got weapons around him. But is his, his card's too high already. Yeah, I know. I, I, I said low-hanging. Fr- I yeah. think I think it can grow. He's yeah. a quarterback. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mike Williams, Chargers. Uh, his stuff is relatively cheap. First first rounder. Phillip Rivers likes to sling the ball. He does. Uh, they He's going to be, when he's healthy, he's going to be the number two behind... Uh, What's the kid from Cal? Keenan Allen. Mm-hmm. And Keenan Allen is a little injury prone. He had, I think he was healthy last year for the most part. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, Keenan Allen misses a couple games, and you have Mike Williams, who's the number one. So, I I would say Mike Williams. I think he has. And his, his cards are, like, his NT RPAs are relatively cheap for being a first rounder. He is. He kind of flew under the radar. So, would you take him over, like, a Corey Davis? Yeah. So, you think Mike Williams is going to be in I a like, situation? I like... Core, I, I like. Uh, I think receivers have a better chance to succeed in the Chargers system, more so than the Titans system. Gotcha. Okay. C Rad, is there one off the top of the dome for 2017? I know there's, there's a Raiders picks are hard to go for. I mean, there's a Melifonu, but I was gonna say Gary and Conley. There you go. There you go. Elijah Hood. <laughs> Eddie Vanderdoes. <laughs> Eddie Vetter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Eddie Vedder from Pearl Jam. Ob Mal. <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, let me say, besides the Raider, hmm, Davis Webb, dude. I know they just got another guy, but Webbo. <laughs> Give him a chance, New York. I know. Well, I got, one of those guys is gonna pan out. I got a, I got a real deep one, uh, and hates. I hate to say it, but Jarek McKinnon is a, is a third down back. Are you want Matt Breida? Matt Breida. Oh, I was just thinking that, dude. That's crazy. Matt Breida. Uh, I think he's gonna be. I think he's gonna be the main featured running back for that team. Okay, I what, like Matt. I can't dispute that. I'm a Niner fan, so I can't what, dispute what that. What about Kamara with Ingram being out for the first four games? Yeah, and they said they're not gonna try to sign anybody either. So Kamara's gonna get like 30 carries initially, and at the beginning of the season, get they'll, f- they'll get somebody. <laughs> Somebody else on the depth chart will get some carries. Yeah, they're not going to sign anybody, but I'm sure they got some guys back there. I'm, I, I don't know if they drafted somebody late, but I'm sure they did. I mean, I this is kind of not not necessarily low hanging fruit, but an obvious one. But I actually think that Watson stuff will go up. Um, I think it's a it's a decent investment now, especially on his big cards like his contenders, like his NTRPAs, because um, I think they run away with that division. And what we've seen from him in limited time. Um, was enough for me. Um, I, I, I liked him at the beginning of the season when he was on Dan Patrick, smart kid. Um, I just I like Watson. Obviously, that's that's a really high investment. I was gonna go with Matt Breida. Dan kind of took that from me, um, so I'm, I'm kind of struggling with uh, maybe Kenny G. Kenny G. The Lions, you know, kind of hung in there all season. Kenny G. Might not be a bad investment. I know it's hard to bank on wide receivers. Was there any quarterbacks that kind of might have a shot? From last year's draft, I was thinking they're, they're I, under the radar. I was thinking about it. I mean, there's obviously Davis Webb. There's uh, Joshua Dobbs for the Steelers. When they just got they just uh, got Mason Rudolph, Rudolph. So I don't I don't know if that's going to be a, a good a good one to go with. Who I mean, what about the Seahawks running back? Uh, they got hurt. Conley, Chris, Chris Carson, Chris Carson. Yeah, uh, they they got Rashad Penny. Rashad Penny's going to be a beast. Rashad Penny, that yeah yeah that's true. I'm trying to think, was there any late round guys that might be um, on the on the like the second guy that may get a shot? Not that I can think of. I mean, you got a decent crop of. I mean, Juju. Maybe Juju might be a guy that you could invest into because he's on a, a big team. You I know he, that I think his cards are already for a you receiver. Know, not for really a, though. You would you would be surprised. But for a receiver, that's why I went Mike Williams. I think Mike Williams has 
substantial growth that that he can have. Where Juju Smith, you're going to be buying him at a at a pretty high price at a premium, yeah, for being a receiver. Um, how about Deonta Foreman? Yeah, you never know with the Texans. Uh, they got is Lamar Miller still there? I mean, yeah, but I mean Foreman Foreman is gonna he's probably going to get more carries this year than he did last year. I think he. I don't know if they. Uh, I don't know if they drafted a running back. I don't think they did. Um, I'm trying to think. They're... And Deshaun Kaiser's probably going to die over there in Green Bay, so he's probably not a great investment, even though he'll probably be cheap. If he ever gets a shot, he may, he may get a bump. Nathan Peterman left, throwing to the other teams. He can't go with Nathan Peterman. Well, and um, they, uh, they got uh, Allen. Yeah. They drafted Josh Allen, so I'm pretty sure Peterman will, will be maybe the third string. The maybe. holder. The holder. Maybe. What about Mitch Trubisky? He's about half – or almost a third of the cost of Watson. I mean, is that a decent investment to go with Trubisky? I mean, he only played one year in college. He actually wasn't bad last year. And that could be a decent investment on an NTRPA at 600 bucks. I mean, it could go up to 1200 real quick, you know, with a couple of good games. So quarterbacks is what the, you know, where the, where the kind of the safe money's at if they've got a little bit of promise and they're going to start. Like, Trubisky's got the job already. How about, how about Fournette? Yeah, Fournette. How about, how, about, how about if Fournette comes out and he leads the league in rushing? I mean, then then it'll definitely go up. Yeah. Um, but I think you're already going to be buying him at a premium. Yeah. All right. One last little thing before we uh, start the majestic break. Um, the football, I wanted to see if you guys could, could guess any of these. They have a – where did it go? Did I just get rid of it? The uh, top ten um, fantasy quarterbacks for the following se- – uh, for the next season. Um, I wanted to see if you guys could name – some of them in the top ten. What, what are we doing? Oh, you just. I, no, I, I, uh, I zoned out, dude. I thought the show was over. I, <laughs> I said the Rams traded Jared Goff. What do you think? Sweet, <laughs> Sean Mannion, baby. <laughs> <laughs> now I, I had the page up. Um, they have early rankings for fantasy football. A quarterback uh, for, for quarterback. quarterbacks. Yeah, it's my, it's my quarterback. So, and I, I was actually surprised at some of the guys that that made it in the top ten. Um, so this is Field Yates from uh, ESPN. TJ Yates? TJ Yates is okay. his brother. Is he on there? Um, Top 10? So I'm sure you can get a few. Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, we can take right out of there. Russell Wilson. Who do you, Who else do you think they have in the top 10 for fantasy quarterbacks? Carson Wentz. Yep. Oh, I'm I'm doing I thought we were just going to go around. Anybody I, 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 thought, I thought we were going to go around the horn, but uh, Jared Goff? Nope. What? Uh, ni- uh, 18. That list is stupid. 18. I I know uh, I know Jimmy Garoppolo is in there nine yeah rank nine that's th- that that's list, a reach that that's a list reach. is uh just throw your computer against the wall and they got Dak Prescott at seven right behind Wentz which I think is a kind of a stretch I would never draft what? Dak Prescott dude is this guy still employed by ESPN I think so yeah oh man he's got uh, Rogers Brady Wilson Newton Watson Wentz Prescott Breeze Garoppolo and Cousins in the top ten Cousins yeah oh he's got Andrew Luck ranked eleven I I mean. Cousins is solid, but going he's going to a new team. Yeah. So we we don't really know what we're going to get with Cousins. Going to one of the best defenses in the league, though. So. Okay. I, I you know we, you be a Joe Flacco or a Trent Dilfer a kind of game manager, and I think still Dude, they got make DC the playoffs. Next to Blake but we're Worlds, talking, bro. but we're talking fantasy, right? We're talking fantasy stats. We're talking, yeah. we're talking ranking fantasy wise. Dude, they got Derek Carr twenty three. Holy crap! Trash. They got him next to Case Keenum and Tyrod Taylor. <laughs> Tyrod Taylor is even going to be the wow. starter. Wow! <laughs> wow! Whatever. That's crazy. Yeah, that that list is. Uh, oh, guy was smoking the hippie. Life. And they got Alex Smith at thirteen for Washington. They go to Washington and he's going to just just do well. I don't think so. But anyways, we got to cut the show in order to get back to break. So don't go anywhere. We're going to be live all the rest of the day. We've got Bowman baseball. We've got uh, more majestic. We got random team. We got the PYT coming up next. We've got uh, 2016 signatures. We were just talking about Jared Goff and Wentz. They're in there. We've got uh, Chronicles Baseball. Judge is having a good year. It's under the radar, but Judge is all up in it. And uh, cheap price points on that. And we've got more NT basketball. So stay tuned for that. And we'll be out for the hype. I didn't play. Thanks for watching this episode. Visit mojobreak.com for more info and your break spot. And we will see you next time.